new game stuff for AF Studios, and today we're going to be taking a look at some uh, tutorials from BuildBox. Uh, welcome to the first of many in this series. Uh, basically, I'm going to be walking you through some of the basics of BuildBox. If you're not familiar with BuildBox, BuildBox is a, a no-code game engine where you can build games from the ground up without a single line of code. Now, if you're into coding, they have options for that as well and we'll get into that here in a little bit but I want to show you first of all whenever you open build box this is what you're greeted with uh, you got your welcome screen with all kinds of predefined templates here so if you have a, a game idea in mind you'd like to expand on uh, you've got all these different options available to you so you can model and improve on them uh, and the great thing I like about this screen here is you hover over them it shows you the game mechanics and that way you can kind of just see if any of these templates have the game mechanics you're looking for uh, and if not you can always start start from scratch as well uh, but here at the top you have your templates tab uh, you have your tutorial tab uh, which here you have all of your interactive tutorials here on the top and it shows you how um, how to make characters how to make enemies all their little mind maps that go with it uh, your game over screens, uh, jumping, uh, using WAS keys, uh, how, how to make your uh, characters move and pass it, all kinds of great tutorials here. Uh, even though this just says launch tutorial, this is basically about how to add an animation to your 2D platformer game. And then down here at the bottom, you know, below all this, you have all of your other tutorials that BuildBox features on their site. Uh, a lot of a lot of great content here, and then you know, the, you got. Uh, other tutorial videos online including this one uh, that kind of helps you walk uh, helps walk you through uh, all of your processes so if you're uh, not finding what you're looking for there's a lot of great resources out there to, to help you out uh, discord is one and uh, the build box forums is another uh, moving on uh, over here is your update screen and the thing I love the most about this update screen is they include the change log every update so if you're wondering hey I had an issue with this uh, you can scroll down here and say uh, say for instance uh, I I had a uh, problem with the media library uh, in the sprite editor uh, let's see if they fix that then down here you can scroll down and see fixed media library look in sprite editor uh, or more specifically let's say you had a bug and I had a bug with a splash screen overlapping OpenGL error okay cool they fixed that so that's one thing I like about this this tab here and then of course if there are any other live updates you can always update it from this screen here uh, moving on we're going uh, you can look over here on the left side of your screen here where you, all of your recently opened projects appear in this window here so it's really handy if you uh, if you have a project going uh, not like me I have a lot of them going uh, a lot of these are different different uh, BB doc files from uh, helping others out here uh, excuse the dog in the background uh, she doesn't like to stay quiet for long um, but if you're working on a, a single project you, you have a lot of time it, that way you don't have to uh, click this open project button and, and go through your browser if it's a recent one you have uh, it'll show up here in this screen here in this list here uh, then you have your create new you can create a game from scratch uh, and we'll walk you through that here in a minute and down here is the latest news uh, anything that's posted any updates that are posted by BuildBox uh, will show up down here and then these are clickable links as well and it'll bring you right to the uh, to your uh, to the link that that gives all the details about the, the newest updates and then you down here you have your social media channels YouTube I'm not sure what that is uh, and then Facebook discord discords a great resource for for a lot of people and of course you have your uh, email support link here alright uh, moving on so what we're going to do from this screen is we're going to go to create new and then when you click that button you're greeted with this screen here you do a 2d game or a 3d game or you have this thing over here called the wizard now you want to be careful using the wizard because depending on what you choose in the creation during the wizard uh, there may be a few things you have to take out and I'll go ahead and show you that so let's create an individual game from uh, from the wizard here so then you see immediately you have an option 2d or 3d we're gonna go with 3d 
Uh, then it gives you your orientation options, landscape and portrait. We'll go landscape. And then here's your uh, camera perspective options, first person, third person, uh, top down, side view, back view, and then observer. Ob observer is used for uh, things like base building games or, or matching games or, or anything like that. Anything where you don't control the character directly uh, via controls, uh, this would be something you'd want to use. And if you hover over each of these options here, it has a description down here at the bottom. Uh, so we'll go we'll go with the uh, third person uh, back view. How about that? Uh, free roaming or side scrolling. Now this is one of those things I was telling you about that you need to be careful with uh, because depending on what you pick here, uh, you have to be careful with what you pick in the next screen. And I'll show you that if you pick side scroller, it's automatically going to program that character to move uh, by attaching a move node to. Uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you uh, what I'm talking about here. So we'll click side scroller. Uh, you also have options for uh, mobile controls. You can use a thumbstick, drag and move, or no controls at all. So we'll go with no controls so I can show you what I'm talking about. This is what I'm uh, uh, rambling on about about the uh, the controls issue. Uh, you have your uh, WSD slide, turn, uh, mouse drag, arrow key slide, turn, or none. If you pick none, then you don't have to disable the move node in the in the original uh, side scroller one. But let's say we want the WSD WASD keys to control it, so we'll we'll click on that. Uh, then you have your um, background options: sunset, sky, outer space, or none. Um, we'll go with sunset, sky. I kind of like. Uh, for your physics, you have normal, no gravity, good for uh, space games or disabled mostly for kinematic games like uh, uh, runner games some of some runner games or uh, uh, maybe matching games or puzzle games or things like that we'll go with normal and then of course you have your default characters you can use a uh, car the players drive a car or the players fly a play spaceship slide on the box for a sphere and we'll use a sphere and then uh, same thing with ground you have grass uh, road textures uh, no textures at all or you can just have no ground at all uh, so we'll go with grass and of course you have all your ornaments and so many different options you know they want to be very specific uh, so you have trees in your background you have meteorites as obstacles or ornaments and cubes we're going to choose cube because we're going to do something with that so whenever you create uh, your custom template this is what brings up here uh, this is your mind map this is what they call a mind map uh, this is your start screen, your start UI. This is what shows up uh, when you start a game. Uh, if you're using the free version, you'll have the build box uh, splash screen logo here. Uh, I do believe uh, your custom splash screen is disabled uh, in the free version, but that's not a big deal here. And then, of course, that is attached to your 3D world uh, where you can, uh, over here in your inspector on the right, you can set things like your gravity, uh, your deleted scene and next three scene thresholds uh, how far it renders and how uh, how long before it deletes itself uh, you can get world fog you can set a background color using a color palette here uh, so it's so many different color options here and uh, things like that and there's another option for that you can drop a background in but we can cover that later uh, if you select your color and make sure you just click OK uh, then you have your fog start and end distance uh, for if you have like a runner game or an open world game and your uh, deleted scene threshold for example or an next scene threshold uh, is, is kind of small you can use fog to kind of help uh, uh, get rid of that that cutoff right there so it kind of gives the player a sense of depth and uh, more sense of an open world and it'll also save your uh, your CPU uh, some memory there. Uh, and then you got time warp and sub steps. Time warp is no longer really used. It's more uh, it's automatic now, I believe, uh, in the newest version. So it's not something you really have to worry about. And then sub steps is uh, not not something most people uh, deal with. And then you have your UI screen over here. You can name it uh, uh, Game UI. Uh, or, or pretty much whatever you want. Uh, and then you also have options for uh, uh, setting up banner ads or interstitial ads uh, in that uh, 
game UI screen. I don't recommend it because it could interfere with the uh, controls and gameplay. Uh, and I can show you some of the best practices or some of the better practices for uh, integrating ads in your game and where to put them and, uh, you know, maintain user, uh, user uh, well, maintain users uh, instead of overwhelming them with a bunch of ads and things like that. Uh, this UI screen, you also drop down some background music in. Uh, same thing with your uh, three, your uh, splash screen as well. Uh, you can have a little jingle play when it's loading up or anything like that. And then, of course, you got your loop music option on or off. Uh, in the left panel here, you can add more than one world uh, if you have uh, the Plus or Pro version. Uh, it's disabled in the free version, so you're limited to one world of uh, free version. UI screens, you can add so many different UI screens. Uh, game over uh, screens, uh, uh, pause menus, uh, and even still there's a there's a neat little workaround you can do using animations for uh, for your own splash screen after the build box splash screen. So there's, there's an option there for you too, and all you really have to do is uh, go in here and look at it. Uh, since we chose landscape, this is kind of how it's going to be uh, laid out here. But if you take uh, an event observer for one and set it to timeout over here in the inspector window, uh, give it a timeout of say 5,000, I believe that's five seconds, and then give it a function of default. Uh, you set the uh, function of default, then it adds another uh, node here, another connector here. Uh, excuse me, so that you can connect it to your your 3D world to load it. So this is pretty much how it's going to play out. You know, this is kind of a, a storyboard or a, a timeline, if you will. Uh, start up uh, your makeshift UI, your splash screen, and then it loads the 3D world. Uh, a lot of times, uh, probably something better to do would be to add another UI here for... Uh, uh, your start screen or uh, you know settings or anything like that and then you know push play to continue th kind of thing like that but we'll just leave it like this is for right now um, and then of course uh, to, to make that happen you'd set your animations down here you drag in uh, your images or whatever you want to use for your animations and you can just do that straight from the file explorer here and you just drag in let's see let's go to pictures uh, da -da -da -da, we'll just use that so if you wanted to drag in a, a, a picture or an object, you just drag and drop and drag it as an image or a navigation button. Uh, we'll drag it as an image and uh, we'll scale that guy way down. Let's see, 0.2 and 0.2. That way you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Uh, so in your animation screen, I know I'm kind of going off topic a little bit, but I kind of wanted to show you this real quick. Uh, also, uh, to navigate your uh, these menus here, if you uh, click your middle mouse button and drag at the same time, it pans your uh, camera, and your mouse will of course zooms in and out. Uh, you can also use space and uh, left left mouse click. If you see down here, you can see my uh, keyboard shortcuts. So just kind of pay attention to that, so maybe you can kind of get an idea of some of the keyboard shortcuts we're using here. Uh, you can also do it that way. I like using the middle mouse wheel let's put that press so for your animation if you go into open uh, this what plays this is what happens when the screen opens for the first time right so we'll leave it at 40 frames you can go in here and edit the frames you can leave it at 80 and then it expands it open we'll leave it at 40 uh, actually no we'll leave it at 80 maybe that'll uh, make a little bit more sense so in order to start your animation any, anything you want to happen if you want to uh, uh, record a starting position, record an ending position, make sure you click record first and then you select your object and then you can either drag it a little bit and then it wants you to release that key or release that mouse button or if you go in here and type a value in the X and Y position it will drop a keyframe. So then the next thing you do is you take your uh, your mouse over here where this yellow marker is and then you take it all the way to the right or wherever you want it and then 
you drag the image or, or whatever you want animated to the next position then it'll automatically drop another keyframe this is your opening animation so if you click off of record and hit play then you'll have your animation uh, your open and close animations you make you want to make sure the loop is turned off uh, and then of course uh, during the, the middle part of it you want it to set it to idle the idle is already set uh, there's already a keyframe here you click record and then of course again you drag it set the next frame that you want to edit and then you drag it again and then it records another frame on this you typically want to choose loop that way it can kind of bounce back and forth or whatever animation you're going for so let's go from open to idle and once this event observer up here detects a certain amount of time has passed then it will automatically load the next scene and I'll show you that here in just a second uh, now in your UI um, screen menu here you have all these different buttons here you have your audio button uh, and this is for used for uh, disabling or en enabling audio down here at the bottom where you see function uh, sound effects or background music you can uh, make a menu for turning that stuff on or off uh, and then you have block touch through it means you can't touch something behind the button uh, for example if you have a uh, uh, your keyboard your, or your on-screen controls for a mobile game or, or whatever uh, and we'll use PUBG Mobile as an example. Okay, uh, so PUBG, you can on mobile, you can drag your finger across the screen to look around, but then you also have on on screen buttons that you can use to uh, to, to shoot or or pick up stuff. Blocking touch through allows you to hit that button without activating or uh, manipulating the uh, the touch to drag to look around function. So it doesn't have two uh, touch commands going on at the same time so block touch through is a good idea especially for UI controls like this uh, on screen UI controls uh, you have your stick to edge options uh, means uh, you know, no matter which way you're facing no matter which way your camera is oriented it's going to stick to the edge over here and it's not going to be floating around uh, then you have your different uh, animations you can drop in here so if you have a uh, a uh, a sound on and off icon you can drop those in here so whenever it's touched it will cycle through those animations or those uh, those button states to uh, allow the user to know hey I've activated this button uh, it is now on and not or now it's off um, and, and etc you know and then you can set the opacity um, to one if you want it to be a, a solid button or if you want to kind of see through it kind of give that little bit of a look to it uh, and that's completely up to you uh, moving on you have your Facebook buttons uh, you can uh, integrate your Facebook URL maybe you have a page dedicated to the game uh, or, uh, or or something like that and then you can you know have them touch that Facebook button they can go to your page like it and share it and all that uh, you have your navigation button this is used for uh, navigating between menus uh, like your settings or audio settings or credits or about or maybe you have a uh, uh, an about section for the developer you know these are all my links and stuff this is where you can go follow me and stuff like that uh, and if you, if you find that your uh, UI is cluttered with extra stuff you don't need all you have to do is uh, click the element and then hit backspace just like that and it's gone uh, same thing with uh, anything else uh, you have your purchase buttons so if you have unlockable stuff of course you have to upgrade to pro uh, to unlock it but uh, if you are a pro user uh, you can use that purchase option to unlock you know characters you have in your game that uh, that aren't available in uh, 
the first stages or, or whatever uh, if you want to unlock skins it's just whatever you want to use that purchase button for basically uh, maybe you have a demo version out there uh, and you can link it to a, maybe a, a say you publish it on Google Play you can uh, give the link to the, the paid version of your game and then people can upgrade to the, to the full version or uh, a pro version as it were uh, of your app or game uh, revoke consent button pretty much self-explanatory you drop that guy in there uh, you have your oh any of these buttons also you can add sounds to you know to, to give that game or give that app a little bit more of a polish um, uh, revoke consent uh, pretty much self-explanatory uh, for ads or or uh, permissions for whatever game you have going on say your game has microphone permissions or or uh, storage permissions on your device you can uh, you can set that button up to to revoke that those uh, permissions uh, URL buttons uh, used for I use them for linking my social media accounts uh, to my games and you know maybe people can go through my games and all that and, and see those URL buttons maybe follow me on YouTube or Twitter or, or, or whatever uh, and things like that um, then you got your lock button uh, here that you can use uh, like if you have multiple levels uh, maybe you have uh, have it set up to where uh, you have to have a certain amount of points or a certain amount of coins or whatever you've collected in your game uh, to uh, advance to the next scene or next level. Uh, you can drop this uh, lock button on on the uh, on the level button or the level selection button if you have a level selection screen. Uh, and once that threshold has been met, then that lock button will, you know, disable, and then you can advance to the next one. Uh, just again, just for that extra polish uh, for your games. Uh, then you've got your control buttons. Uh, control buttons are pretty self-explanatory. You can make them whatever image you want. Uh, your click and unclick sounds. Uh, once you, uh, in order to use these uh, buttons, however, up here at the top, it's pretty good practice to name them. That way, whenever you go into your node editors uh, within the, uh, your viewport and all, all of your hierarchies, when you start actually programming these buttons, you will want to be able to find the button that you're referencing. So, let's say this is a start button. I want to use that button. Now it's it's called start. Okay. Uh, of course, then you have unlock features usually used in tandem with the uh, lock button or not. Uh, this uh, and I, I think I told you wrong. The unlock uh, event observer is used for yeah, uh, unlocking the next scene. So uh, once a th certain thresholds met, then they don't unlock the next uh, the next level. Uh, the, I believe the lock button uh, would be used for something like unlocking a feature within the game. So excuse me there. Uh, and then of course you got your labels. Uh, the labels you use for uh, uh, keeping score. Uh, it'll display your score on screen. Uh, you can set it to where it's all points, current world, 3D world points, uh, the score type, points or coins. If, you, if you're collecting coins in your game, uh, you can have it up there uh, saying you collect such and such amount of points or such and such amount of coins. Uh, and you can use that in tandem with maybe like a coin image or something next to it. Now, there's, there's so many different options to, uh, for polish. Excuse me, let me bring that back. Uh, you can also edit your font uh, if you go up here where it's got this uh, upper and lowercase a you can open that font editor up and you have all these different options for types of font uh, you have your font uh, and then you can name your font uh, whatever you want by going over here saying this is my my game custom font uh, for example uh, that way you can access it later in other UIs uh, and once you define a font for this game, you can access it pretty much from any UI. So if you drop another label in, uh, it'll show up in your drop-down menu uh, as a custom font. Uh, then, of course, you can change uh, the font. You can change the color of the font. Uh, you have uh, uh, 
your uh, draw options here uh, to kind of make it well, it's kind of hard to see that one uh, let's see, make it three and then change the color oh maybe it would help if I click draw on it there you go so it'll draw a line uh, in between here uh, you know in the middle of all the things all the letters and characters here to kind of give you a, again it's all about polish and then of course you have your gradient options uh, you know your start color will be uh, say white and you can have a gradient down to a gray or, or a black or whatever um, and of course you have your shadow options uh, and you can also change the color of the shadow or you can have it uh, transparent this is what this little checkered flag thing here means uh, so we'll, we'll just say we'll, we'll save it as it is uh, anytime you make a, a change in any of this it automatically saves it so if you exit then now your font, your custom font, is renamed here and it shows up here. So that's that's another another cool little feature about uh, Buildbox. Usually, once you make a change and things like that, it saves. Uh, another thing you can do is Control S uh, and and click Save, and then of course you uh, can name it and save it, and then boom, it's done. And then it will show up on your home screen under the recent projects. All right, so I think we're done with the UI for now. Uh, we're going to go back to our mind map. Uh, the next thing we want to uh, do is go to our 3D world. Okay, so whenever you go to edit your 3D world, this is the screen you're greeted with, right? Uh, you've got your main character. Since we set that, we predefined that in our wizard. We have our background object our cube object for ornaments and of course we have our ground object um, okay so before we go any further uh, this I, I want to show you uh, or explain to you what which each of these elements in this screen here are uh, obviously you've got your your pretty typical Windows program stuff up here file new open recent uh, there's a, everything that's going to be in that list that I was showing you earlier save save as export uh, options for iOS, Android, Steam, and Windows executable. Uh, now keep in mind uh, the free version only allows you to ex export to mobile uh, plus and Pro allows you to uh, export to Windows executable. Um, and of course you got your about screen it gives you everything about uh, uh, your current version uh, what your current subscription level is and all that. Uh, we'll, we'll close that and then edit undo redo align and randomize scenes okay I'll, I'll go over that here in a minute but align and randomize scenes are, is kind of neat so if you, depending on your gameplay you can uh, have all of your scenes play in a certain order or for mostly runner games or hyper casual games uh, if you want to give that that feel of randomness uh, between scenes you know that way you, your player doesn't you know, get used to all the obstacles and you know becomes OP and can just you know cheese cheese your game you can click randomize scenes and then it'll randomly select each scene uh, to play next one after another uh, so that's that's pretty cool too uh, add as uh, disabled right here in the screen I'll, I'll show you add here in a minute uh, view uh, atlases atlases I'm gonna show you this uh, right here real quick because this is a big big deal here um, most of the time 90% of the time somebody's game is running slow it's because they've dropped in a lot of images uh, as a lot of them they're not using so if you have uh, a, a clutter of just so many images that you're not using what you want to do is click optimize right so what optimize does is it goes through all of your assets all of your images and takes out the ones that you're not using uh, so it saves memory saves storage space and then um, click OK and then I like to click rebuild you know that way it kinda rebuilds and defragments the whole game that way it makes make sure everything's built correctly uh, and also it rebuilds uh, all of your images in a, in, in a pretty um, a, a decent layout it's a, uh, an optimized layout uh, for example so if I have a bunch of buttons here or a bunch of pictures or background pictures or, or anything like that and I click optimize get rid of the ones I'm not using and rebuild it's gonna 
bring all of those together so you're not using more than one atlas or the, the least amount of atlas as possible uh, so that's one thing you can do to make your game run smoother uh, let's see go back here under view you can zoom in zoom out snap mode it snaps everything to the grid as you move it uh, your camera view uh, for your editor uh, uh, your perspective and orthographic uh, so this is orthographic and this is perspective um, and it just depends on on your workflow how you want to do it uh, you can align by the X axis the Y axis Z axis uh, for your kind of 2d editing uh, rotate up write down rotate 180 degrees uh, move to the ground uh, the kind of kind of quick and easy ways to do it instead of uh, you know right clicking and, and dragging your mouse to rotate or uh, middle mouse clicking and dragging up and down and, and everything like that uh, then you've got your tool tips uh, down here if you if you enable it it'll kind of show you everything your mouse hovers over it'll give a description of it down here uh, that also depends on your uh, your resolution for your your workstation or your PC that you're working on uh, make sure that you cut it off down here so that's uh, another handy thing that you can have in your toolkit uh, tools uh, another good thing for uh, game optimization is removing unused sound objects uh, so if you've got a bunch of sounds in there you maybe you've changed them up a little bit uh, click that click that guy right there and it'll remove everything that you don't use uh, help you optimize your game they've got you know also your help tab build box docu documentation uh, JavaScript API reference if you're into coding if you want to do some custom coding and make your uh, game do exactly what you want uh, check your updates uh, self-explanatory uh, get get logs uh, for uh, uh, maybe you have uh, build box crashes and sometimes it does and it's just one of those things about uh, anything in beta or anything that's kind of new uh, you know things are going to happen computers aren't perfect neither are we so I mean we built them so obviously they're not going to be perfect uh, and then of course you got your activate license button here so if you reinstall build box uh, uh, for any reason like uh, it's not running correctly and sometimes a good uninstall and reinstall will help fix that and then you know if, if it doesn't automatically you can just go back in there and activate your license that you've uh, purchased or, or pre-version if, if you're like me uh, okay so moving on uh, up here we kind of covered this uh, everything that you edit within your mind map is going to show up in a tab here and obviously you can uh, close them out to kind of get rid of the clutter uh, over here on the on the right hand side you've got your play preview the whole game uh, button uh, which should bring up uh, this screen here uh, and that starts it from the very beginning right so now uh, now we're playing the game right uh, but if you want to just check out this scene you can hit this scene button here you know start playing the scene automatically that way you don't have to sit there and wait through for your whole game to start up and as you can tell here in this preview window I've got my debug mode uh, set up so that shows all of my collision shapes uh, all of the orientations of the objects you know to kind of see how each object is interacting with each other and I know this is kind of getting long-winded here but yeah I, this is like again this is for just covering the basics for for brand new users and maybe maybe some users that aren't brand new maybe uh, they can uh, hear something that's that's new to them maybe help them out a little bit so uh, you got your screenshot button uh, you can reload the entire game and it starts over uh, you got your zoom options here uh, 50 75 hundred percent you know pretty self-explanatory uh, you can set your resolution here uh, you'll notice that I got this window here open this is my debug window so anything that's a warning uh, will show up here uh, any compile errors or any uh, reference errors will show up here and then any coding errors will show up uh, uh, under this tab here uh, and you, of course you can highlight all three of them they'll all show up uh, warnings would be like uh, hey you have a uh, you have an image object in here but you don't have a texture for it you know that may cause a problem it's not anything that's going to crash the game 
uh, your uh, uh, compile errors over here are going to be like if you have an if collide node but you don't have uh, an affected asset you don't have uh, a collision specified like if the sphere collides with cube you don't have cube specified uh, so it will it, it'll cause an issue uh, you can still play it but it just won't do anything and of course you got your coding errors uh, if you're doing custom scripts and things like that if it doesn't if, if your code's not uh, compiled correctly it's just the games is not going to do what it's supposed to do uh, so there's there's all that and then of course once you fix it or you think you fixed it you uh, clear all the the logs here uh, so that you can see new only new logs pop up uh, that way you can help identify the issue uh, moving on okay so now this area here uh, on the left is all of your project libraries uh, this includes uh, your characters, any obstacles, your background, uh, anything that's within this viewport here is going to be over here, uh, including empty game objects. Uh, we use empty game objects a lot to kind of create uh, checkpoints or, or colliders or collision groups or, or anything like that, and uh, we can show you how to do that later too. Uh, so anything that's in your game is going to be over here in the asset library or in your project library. Uh, the asset library is going to pop up a window. You can bring in primitive shapes from cube, comb, cylinder, plane, all of these good things. And then we have predefined assets, uh, smart assets. Uh, a lot of people love to use smart assets. Uh, these smart assets from the atom point down to the platform lift. Uh, so you have all of these from here to here that have predefined code in them, predefined mechanics. Uh, so these are great great tools to use and we've got your door swings door slides door scales anything that uh, Almost anything that you're wanting your game to do can usually be found in here And of course you can take these assets uh, reapply a texture uh, you can reapply uh, a whole different 3d model to it and have the same same mechanics uh, so that's these are very very useful uh, in, in throwing your game together in a uh, these all right here are great placeholder assets to, to make sure your concept is going to work. Uh, and then of course down here you've got your uh, basically your decorations and, and any world assets that you want to kind of help make your game look pretty. Now the thing about using a lot of the assets in, in, in your scenes, it can be very CPU heavy, especially on mobile devices. Uh, so you, you kind of want to limit yourself on uh, uh, what you use. Uh, don't fill up your whole world with it because the camera's not going to see it anyway. Uh, that kind of thing. And to add any of these to uh, to your uh, project library here, uh, you can double click on them or just highlight it and click add to library. Now the greatest thing I like about this, again, is is same with the templates. Uh, if you highlight it, it'll give you a preview over here about uh, of the mechanic used and, and, and what functionality each one of these assets has. Uh, so before adding it you don't have to test it first to to see if it's going to work for you you can kind of highlight it and say okay this is what I'm looking for uh, and if it is you can click it or if not you can just okay I'm moving on uh, go to this other one so great great things about it and of course you know if you highlight uh, one that does it's not a smart asset you can kind of get a 3d preview of it here uh, and it's a nice little rotating used car dealership style over here uh, alright moving on uh, to close the asset library once you've got everything you want you can just click the asset library tab again okay so when we started our scene we noticed that hey my character's already moving it's doing its own thing but I remember putting keyboard controls in there so that's one of those things that's the thing I was talking about so we'll open up our characters node map by double clicking it now, because we gave it a side scroller attribute, it attached this move node right here to our character. So, upon the start of our character, it's going to automatically start moving. Uh, and we, we don't want that. So, just click highlight it, select backspace or hit backspace on it, 
boom, it's gone. Now, earlier, we decided we wanted keyboard control, so it added our keyboard control uh, brain box, if you will, to it, uh, or a predefined bo uh, controls here. Uh, it's just keyboard button nodes attached to move nodes. Uh, they're already enabled. You don't have to connect them to anything other than the keyboard to the move node. So now that we have our keyboard nodes in here, we can tell it, hey, to move. And this also depends on your camera's camera's angle as well. So if I want to move left, I hit the A button, and that's going to control the horizontal axis. Uh, left is negative, right is positive, up is positive on the Y, uh, down is negative on the Y. Uh, uh, forward is typically positive on the Z, and it's typically negative on on uh, back. It just also that's that also depends on your camera's angle. Uh, we'll just stick with this. So moving left is negative ten. Moving right is the D key, and it moves positive 10 on the on the X or horizontal axis uh, then you have W and, and S for moving forward and backwards uh, W would be forward but the, the Z axis is negative and, and S is of course in positive uh, inside your node maps uh, and we'll, we'll cover that here in a minute too uh, inside your node maps, you have all of your node categories over here. Uh, you have your content nodes, uh, 3D model, like if you want to add something to your character, uh, you can add a 3D model in here, give it a, a mesh and a texture. Uh, you can check cast or receive shadow or uncheck them. Uh, a lot of times on mobile, you'll want to disable those to save CPU usage. Uh, and of course you can set its initial position rotation scale uh, and that's that, that can be kind of a, a pain a kind of meticulous time-consuming thing to do so if you want to have this uh, this sphere here have eyes on it then you can take little uh, cylinders scale them down and uh, mess with these values over here on the right and uh, you know place them exactly on the thing now uh, another update that they've had that helps with that is this guy right here. Uh, they didn't have this before, but now they do. Uh, this is your 3D model uh, preview window. So if you start adding stuff in there like other 3D models to, to go with it, then you can see where they are in the world and uh, make your adjustments accordingly. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to stay simple with that um, for now, so we'll just delete that. Uh, you have your animation nodes, uh, eight side animations for uh, isometric or top down uh, type of games. Uh, you have your uh, uh, PNG sequences uh, slots here for up, down, left, upright, all that. Uh, and you can take those PNG sequences if you have them uh, and just drag and drop them in. I don't have any uh, PNG sequences right now where I'd show you, but. Uh, same thing you do with uh, Im any images or textures or anything. You just uh, you just find it. You select all the sequences uh, within that specific movement. Drop the guy down in here, and it'll cycle through all those uh, images and give you your animation. All right. So next, you have your sound nodes. Uh, connect those to. Uh, if collide nodes for points uh, or anything really uh, you add sounds to uh, collect coins or points you know like you would you know Mario or something uh, you got your label uh, nodes trail nodes 3d trail nodes uh, the sub scene and keyframe animation nodes are new uh, with the new FBX support that buildbox has uh, so you can kind of edit some uh, some animations with within your FBX model. I don't have any of those right now either. Uh, and maybe we can cover that later. Uh, I know Smart Penguins has some uh, FBX tutorials there and they may cover it there. Um, then you have your controls, your touch controls, touch move, like 
your touch and drag, your touch rotate, kind of like kind of like this right here. Uh, is touch node like if this is touch and do this? Uh, you know, joystick controls, keyboard moves, uh, which is basically this here. Uh, touch path, four-way swipe, UI buttons, UI button. Let me cover that real quick. So now that my UI button is enabled, I have a UI button uh, on my game UI. Or do I? Nope, I put it over here. All right, so uh, start my start UI, right? Um, and this is an example. This isn't typically how you set it up, but I want to show you uh, uh, how you would control that. So upon pressing the button, I want to enable the 3D model. Now, to to define the button that I want to use to put uh, to activate that, you have a drop down over here. And remember, earlier we defined a start button, so we click that start button. So now this UI button node is assigned to the start button on your UI. This guy right here. So now, whenever you touch that button on the UI, it's going to send a signal to this UI button node because the name matches and it's going to do whatever you have it attached to. Uh, so if I want to enable a 3D model when I push that UI button then that UI model will, will appear. So that's that's important to know right there uh, and a lot of folks have have issues with it so a lot of people struggle with it. Uh, you have your pressed and released functions here so say for instance I want to press the button, enable it, but when I release it, because I'm triggering the enabled value twice, it's going to render it false, or theoretically it should. Uh, maybe it's different in an update, but I I've done it before, so. Uh, but I, I don't want to tell you wrong, so uh, we'll just leave it like that uh, for now. Uh, but in theory, if you enable, if you trigger the enabled signal twice, it should render it false. Uh, or you can say when it's pressed, enable this, and whenever I release it, I want it to move after it's enabled. So you uh, attach it to a move node, which is over here. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that. Uh, whenever I press the button this 3D model becomes enabled. That means it becomes visible. And then when I release it, it's going to stay enabled and then it'll jump. Uh, if that makes any sense. So these are just different ways you can add different mechanics. Uh, great great to use in stuff like puzzle games and, and, and things like that. Or maybe uh, something kind of like a, a slingshot. Uh, but they already have a slingshot node in here. So if you want to push it, uh, enable the, the, the model, and then when you release it, 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 it does an action. It doesn't have to be jump. It could be anything. Uh, so th so there's that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy. Uh, well, I'll leave that guy there for now. Um, okay, so under your movement, uh, we cover the jump. You have your move node, like, like I showed you earlier, uh, uh, which is down, down here. This also... Uh, is part of your controls. Uh, you've got your your motor nodes. Uh, that's that's a little uh, different. Okay, so uh, your motor nodes are pretty much uh, used for uh, propelling a, a a hinged linker forward, uh, basically. Uh, so if you have something attached to a hinge uh, or a link. Uh, this helps propel that in in, in a forward direction. Uh, that's we'll, we'll, we can go over that in another tutorial. Right now we're just going over the basics. Uh, you have your path move node. Uh, this is used for uh, uh, stuff like twisted switch or uh, if you have a, a a game mechanic that follows a certain path uh, and you move within that path and you don't want to go off the path. Uh, think of um, maybe Subway Surfers or Temple Runner or something like that. Uh, uh, that character will follow that specific path 
And of course, you've got uh, all of your different uh, attributes here too. You know, enabled obviously renders it true. Uh, jump uh, for jump force, you can attach that to a control, uh, and then of course your scene speed. Uh, you can uh, uh, set your scene speed to uh, any value you'd like. Uh, in that regard, uh, you got your your float, rotate, bounce, and wave. These are all. These are going to also all be found in the brain boxes. Uh, and I'll show you that when we go back to 3D world. Uh, glue. Uh, if you uh, you can use that for uh, sticking objects to walls, uh, back and forth, uh, kind of like a a magnetic field, or if you have something that you're, you're side scrolling on a uh, in a platformer and you jump up and you touch the ceiling you can glue to the ceiling until you hit the jump button again it'll uh, drop you back down to the ground uh, so all these different nodes here uh, you have a lot of different uh, different options for different mechanics for games they're, they're almost limitless uh, speedometer uh, you can set a, a threshold for max speed with it, that's a new one. Uh, your actions, your if collide nodes, your actions are basically all right. We're looking at when this happens, do this, or if statements. If this happens, then do this. Uh, your event observers will be tied to your event observers in uh, in your UIs. Uh, so we have a timeout. If we wanted to set it to game over. And then this is going to look for this game over event. So if you have something saying, uh, when this happens, it's game over. Uh, or if this guy collides with something, then it's game over. Uh, inside your collide node, you want to set your affected asset to whatever is going to cause the game over. So for instance, if we run into an enemy, uh, in our case, our cube is our enemy. Uh, you can select enemy, or you can select cube specifically. Uh, you can also um, use cube for like a checkpoint or any asset. Uh, and you can see here that we don't have our uh, 3D model enabled, so it, it's it's a blank. It's it's a blank collision shape. Uh, so in that at that point you'd want to use menu jump and then of course your event observer will if you have it set up um, will look for the that event uh, da -da 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 -da. redirect or request for uh, re uh, I have a template set up for that uh, actually and I'll, I'll show it to you uh, in another tutorial uh, but anyway that's how you hook that up uh, your your affected asset would need to be defined in here uh, and of course, after that, you got uh, your spawn nodes, your defeat nodes. Uh, if you collide with something or if you push a button, you can set colors. Uh, you have your camera uh, animations. So when you start the game, you want a kind of an opening sequence and then uh, zoom in on your character. You can do that. Uh, rotate towards. Uh, nodes, scale animation, color animations, yeah, all these different uh, nodes for actions. Uh, you have your health nodes, uh, damage nodes, if it collides with an enemy, it, it does damage, or, or if an object your, your uh, character is holding uh, collides with an enemy, uh, you deal a certain amount of damage to that enemy, uh, provided that enemy's uh, my uh, node map has a uh, has a health node attached to it. So once you start messing with things like that, then you start, uh, you, ha you have to make sure that each one of them is gonna be talking to each other. Um, and, uh, and a way to do that is, uh, a good way to do that is using signal nodes. Uh, uh, these guys right here, send and receive nodes. Uh, they're the same thing uh, as events. So if I name this one harm, my receive node needs to be named harm 
So if I push a button, I want to send a signal called harm, right? So if I go to my cube, I want it to receive that signal and make sure it's called harm. And then when it receives that signal, it's going to, we'll just say, uh, defeat. And it will defeat itself and remove. So let's let's do that real quick. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Uh, go to my sphere. Let me uh, get rid of some of this stuff here. That way we're not doing a too much at once. Okay, so if collide, it's going to harm, right? So I'm going to play my game. It's going to do this little animation. Oops, I hit the wrong button. I'll go back to here. I'm going to just play the scene. So now I have my WASD keys. So you can see now it's not moving. So once I collide with it, it sends a signal to the cube that defeats it. So, and, and that's just one way you can set it up to do uh, to do damage or to to do anything. And, and it's not limited to uh, to uh, defeating the character. It sure is taking a long time. Well, and, and you, it's a lot of values you have to play with too. And this is a good example of it. Um, once it reaches a threshold of its time, uh, it may not uh, do what it's supposed to do. Uh, so you'll definitely want to uh, uh, play with those values and make sure it's doing. We actually need to put my 3D model back on here. Uh, but that's not important right now. Anyway, so I just wanted to give you an example of how that um, that signal, signal works. Uh, uh, you can also use stuff like... Uh, Add point. Add point is very common. Uh, this guy right here. So in my game UI, we're just gonna throw a score label in there real quick. Uh, it's just gonna be my custom font. It's gonna be set to score. So now, whenever I open the game, I'm gonna see. Let's go back to that. It's gonna take too long. Uh, I'm going to see my score label in the game. You see this guy right there? So whenever I run into the cube, it should add a point. Maybe I didn't set it up right. Hang on. If collide, add point to current points. Okay, back to 3D world, hit my scene. Let's try it again. And it's looking red like this. You can see the collision shape because I disabled the 3D model in it. But now that I've got it set right, every time I hit a cube, it adds a point or whatever I have that attached to. Uh, another good practice is once you hit an object that gives points, you want to defeat it because you don't want to continue to run over it and get, get points because that's kind of cheating. All right, so there's that. Uh, you have your reset, uh, pretty much the same thing as this now, I believe. Uh, so that's kind of obsolete. Uh, if you run into a checkpoint or uh, run into a, a game over session or whatever, it'll reset your current points. Uh, set it to points. Uh, total and best or current points. I don't recommend doing uh, total and best points being erased uh, because, well, they don't have much of a reason to beat their own high score because they won't know what it is. Uh, if you click on these little uh, pencil icons next to any of these nodes that have that option, uh, you can go in here if you're familiar with JavaScript because this is what it's built on. You can actually go in here and make some modifications to the code uh, to give it more of a customization. Uh, if, you, if you're not terribly familiar with it, BuildBox has an API reference for uh, JavaScript. It kind of uh, gives you an idea of what what functions are available to you, uh, what attributes are available. Uh, kind of give you an idea of how it's structured. Uh, 
right now, and I'll be honest, it's, it's, it's very limited on, on uh, details. Uh, so the best practice would be to maybe pick up a JavaScript course and kind of get a, a good idea of um, what you could do with JavaScript. Uh, and I'll, I'll say this about just about any programming language, because uh, there's, there's several that I know. Once you understand the fundamentals of programming, learning other languages becomes that much easier. Uh, be, and I say that because most of them are structured about the same. So uh, if you're coming from C sharp, for example, like I did, your function init is exactly the same thing as C sharp's void start. Uh, it's just called different things like learning another language, uh, you know, vocal language like English and French and German and Spanish, you know, uh, well, I can't really say that because it's not technically structured the same uh, in different languages. Uh, some of them if you are, are spoken backwards for some reason. Nobody knows science. It's ridiculous. At any rate, uh, but in, in terms of programming languages, it, the structure is the same. So once you understand the fundamentals of programming, uh, how it's laid out, what needs to happen in order, uh, 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 setting variables, uh, creating functions, creating signals. Uh, you start learning about uh, attributes like delta time and uh, rotation. And once you learn the, the fundamentals, the basic fundamentals of programming, it's that much easier to learn other languages. And I'll leave that alone for now because that's going to come up later. Uh, Next is our level selector node. Uh, same thing. Uh, because it's an action, if I do something, it's going to bring up a level selector. Uh, and this is going on for quite a bit, so uh, I'm going to try to start making this a little shorter. Uh, next set of nodes you have here is your monetization nodes, uh, your reward video, your interstitial video, or ads and of course your your purchase options uh, for pro users uh, you'll need these in here if you're gonna have those you'll, you'll need to uh, these nodes in here if you're gonna in implement ads within your game uh, because just because you go into the project settings and set that up under SDKs doesn't mean it's gonna automatically run correctly unless it has something to call back to and that's why you need these nodes uh, and then under advanced is where you have all your your really fancy stuff, your scripting nodes. You can build a script from scratch. Uh, this section here, this function under the script node is new. It used to just be, uh, uh, oh, so it's a sigma name, I believe. Uh, update, init, and start were all part of the uh, initial script nodes. Uh, the rest of it you had to kind of type in yourself, but now these are default signal re requested. Uh, your signals are these guys right here. Uh, so anytime you, you add a value here, uh, your signal is going to be uh, referenced here. So that's, and of course, that's part of another tutorial series that I want to get ahead of myself. Uh, state machines uh, used for animations, uh, especially in 2D. Uh, if you're moving left, you'll set it up to uh, to play a certain animation. I can show you a finished one here in a second, uh, and I will. Uh, your delay nodes, remove nodes, uh, UI joystick move, texture scrollers, global counters, loggers, all this stuff here is it's just extra stuff you can use to uh, uh, just just to enhance your game that much more. Uh, and, and if you're completely new to this and you're not, uh, you know, an advanced user, not familiar with coding or anything like that, don't worry. Uh, there's plenty of things that you can do without all the advanced stuff and make a really good game. There's a lot of games on the App Store and Google Play Store that were built with build box that are just knocking it out of the park right now. Okay, so back to our 3D world. Uh, and, and we'll get this wrapped up pretty pretty soon. Uh, there's a few more things I want to cover, and then we'll call it. Uh, under your uh, 
each object has the different attributes over here in the inspector window. You'll hear me call this the inspector window because that's what it's called. Uh, some people call it an editor. Uh, I'm used to calling it an inspector window. Um, everything that's public within the code uh, will be over here. Anything that you can you edit uh, that's public within the code will be over here. The sphere, since it's our character, it's good practice to leave him in the collision group of character. And earlier we set up a uh, collision group for our sphere if, if collide uh, affected asset was cube if we set him to an enemy group then you can add other uh, other objects in here that are enemies and set their collision group to enemy so they'll all use the same group so that whenever you collide with anything that's of the enemy group the same thing is going to happen no matter which one of those enemies you hit so that, that makes it a lot easier to kind of manage uh, back to our 3d world then of course you have your physics excuse me uh, your physics drop down you have static dynamic kinematic uh, static obviously doesn't move it, it, it can't have any forces acted upon it it cannot be uh, interacted with other than it'll make you stop once you hit it. A dynamic is uh, just like we had earlier uh, whenever I ran into the cube my physics interacted with his physics or the cube's physics and it sent the uh, cube flying. And of course kinematic uh, you can uh, apply physics to other objects but they can't apply physics to you. Uh, then of course you can set your uh, friction, your bounce, and your mass uh, be careful with the mass if you're having gravity issues uh, you might want to check your character's mass against uh, the ground uh, if it's if it's too big it'll slide through the ground anyway uh, you can set your uh, positions rotations uh, and uh, your collision shapes here you can access those uh, up here in this menu and I'll go over that real quick uh, and of course you got your brain boxes down here and this goes for every asset here uh, these are new these are FBX uh, brain boxes it kind of sets everything up for you then you have nodes uh, your advanced move brain boxes down here so the platformer is something I like to use a lot if I'm making a platformer game doesn't matter what it is because um, you can always change the uh, animation later so that's a really good uh, brain box for this uh, and that's what I, I wanted to go ahead and show you that state machine anyway uh, in the cube so this well this is not really a state machine it's actually an advanced script but this also acts as a state machine so if I'm pressing the jump key it's going to signal signal to this it's going to receive it from here and because it's in that jump state this animation is going to play uh, and the same thing goes for idle and run uh, we'll touch base on that later I know I know this is going on way too long right now uh, alright one more thing before we go uh, up here is your your tools you got your move tool your rotate tool your scale tool and a multi tool Mo mostly for 2D uh, editing and things like that. Uh, and you can see that little character is kind of poking out through there because we added that brain box. Over here, if you click your camera icon, it's going to show you what the game you're going to see in the game. When you're on that, be careful moving your mouse around uh, or trying to pan and zoom because whatever you do here is now what the camera sees. So if you need to move anything, the best thing to do is click off the camera and then move it. So that's very important. Or if you need to rotate around and kind of get a different perspective on it, make sure that is unmarked because you will move your camera around. Alright, uh, this is going to have your overall, uh, th this is going to show you uh, your uh, position of each object in here.
this is your collision shape editor okay so you notice we have a cube there but because we added an animation it adjusted that size if you ever scale any of your objects or change the size of any of your objects you want to make sure that you also uh, fix your collision shapes uh, and you do that you can do that by here if you uh, click the move tool you can move the collision shape away from your object uh, or if you scale it up you can scale your collision shape accordingly and of course when you're done with that you can click off of that uh, then you have your 2d perspective uh, self-explanatory it kind of breaks it down to one plane uh, other than that for now like, like I said this is all it's gone on for a little while uh, and I hope it wasn't too confusing uh, if you have any other suggestions for other tutorials that you'd like to see uh, and this one, this one here is just a basic getting started, kind of familiarizing you with uh, with the layout of Buildbox, where to find everything else, uh, and things like that. Um, and then we'll go over some more uh, basic things later on. Uh, but if you have any more suggestions or any suggestions you'd like to see, uh, make sure to hit us up on uh, Discord and Buildbox Discord. I'll leave a link down below, as, uh, as well as uh, Buildbox forums. Uh, and it's very very helpful community there so uh, or you can just leave a comment below and, and let me know what you'd like to see and until next time I will see you all later and happy building and happy coding mm -hmm.